Hi guys, welcome back to another video of me teaching. And today I have the 2015 AIMO question 7 for you guys. So why don't we just get into the question? Well, this question lets us consider a shortest path along the edges of a 7x7 seven seven square grid from bottom left vertex to the top right. And it's asking us how many paths have no edges above the grid diagonal. And this is the grid diagonal that we're talking about. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to address is what does it mean by shortest path? Well, shortest path means that you can't go backwards. So in our case, we can only go right and up. Because if we go left, we're going backwards. And of course, if we're going down, we're going backwards. So we're only going right and up. So if we have no restriction, then we can easily tell that the answer would just be C147. And we see that this restriction just cuts the whole thing in half. So would it be that easy if the answer is just C147 over 2? Well, actually not. Because there are so many more paths that intersect this diagonal. And we can intersect it actually many times, once, twice, or any times you want. So today I'll be showing you a few ways to solve this problem. Now, the first way is actually very easy to solve this question. It takes around 30 seconds. So this question actually meets the criteria of something called the Catalan numbers. And if you want to know more about the Catalan numbers, you can view this beautiful video from number file over here. Okay, so I won't go that in depth into Catalan numbers, but I'll just tell you the definition. So if we define the nth Catalan number, this will actually be equal to one over n plus one times c to n n. Now in our case, n will just be seven. So C of 7 would just be 1 over 8 times C 14, 7. And if you try this on your own, this is equal to 429, which is the answer. And if you notice, it is not actually divided by 2, it is divided by 8. Okay, now the second way will actually be a recursion way. And this way is a high school way. Okay, so... Let's see. Have you noticed that in some paths, because we can't go over this diagonal, in some paths, some edges will touch the diagonal and some paths won't? Well, this brings us to the question. Do we have to split it into cases with touch and no touch? Well, I'm actually going to do that now. So if I split the cases into touch or no touch, then we see that in the touch case, there are actually cases inside. So there are cases inside of the case. Now, when, where can we touch on this diagonal for the first time? Well, of course we can touch dot one, dot two, dot three, all the way to dot seven. So if you define k, to be the first time it touches the diagonal. So we can write two, three, four, five, six, seven. And if k is equal to seven, that's actually equivalent to no touch because seven is actually the very end. So we can just cross this out. Okay. Hmm. So if I just put a random dot on the diagonal and just let that to be the first touch, okay? So I'm going to put it over here. This is going to be K. Now, we know that a very important information is that before K, it will not touch the diagonal. So isn't the amount of paths from O to K the same as just this little triangle? Well, actually, yes, because before k, we are not 
touching the diagonal. So that means that the amount of parts from O to K is actually the same as this triangle. Right? And this point is just K minus 1. So now, if I define a function P to be the amount of paths there are you can take from O to whatever is inside, for example, if we want to know the amount of paths from 0 to, say, 3, I mean 2, then that would just be P of 2. And in this case, it's just P of K minus 1. And now, after the k, it will be the same pattern as before. It will still be this triangle. So we can just highlight this triangle. And to make it more general, I'll change the 7 into n. So we have to multiply this by n minus k, p n minus k. And now we have to add all of this up from 1 to 7 or in our case 1 to n, because I generalized it. So we have to add a sigma, k goes from 1 to n. And now we know that p of n is just equal to this. Okay, so I'll actually show you a few different p's. So I'll first define p of 0 to be 1, and all the way up to 3, you can count them on your own. For example, P of 1 is still 1, P of 2 is 2, and P of 3 is 5. But from P of 4, it gets very hard to count. So from P of 4, we have to use this. And when from P of 4, 4 is just the n, okay? So this is actually the same as k goes from 1 to 4 of this. So I'll just show you one example, and you can do the rest yourself. So, this becomes P of 1 minus 1 is 0 times P of 4 minus 1, which is 3. And then we have to add. Okay, so if you try this on your own, you see that it's just equal to P of 1, P of 2. And then it's actually just this multiplied by 2. But I will write them out. It will become P2 times P1, and then we add P3 times P0. Okay, and now, if you don't know, you can solve this all on your own, because all of the answers are over here. This will just equal to 4 ting. So, now we see that P of 4 is 4 ting. And now, I will leave you the rest for you to do by yourself. And I'll write down all of the values down here. And after you've tried everything, you see that P of 7 is just 429. Okay, so now we're up to the third method. And although I have rubbed almost half of the numbers out, these numbers are actually a derivation of the Catalan numbers. So all of the numbers are Catalan numbers. Now, the third way I'll just go over briefly. The third way is actually just counting. And this way, actually, only primary school students can understand. So let's see. From 0 to this point, how many ways do we have? Well, of course, one, right? Because you cannot go backwards because it says the shortest path. Similarly, for this one, it's also one, right? Because you can't go backwards. And similarly, for all of these, it's all one. Okay, now, what about here? Well, this point must be the same as this point, right? So this, there's also one way. Now, this point. This point, the amount of ways, isn't that just the sum of this point and this point? 
which is 2. So this point is the sum of this and this, which is 3. And so is this point. 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 Right? And then you can just keep going. So this point is the same as this point. This point is the sum. 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 And this point is the sum. And now I'm going to keep going. This point is the same. This point is the sum. This point is the sum. This point is the sum. And this point is the sum. Okay, and then we can keep going. This point, we keep the same. This point is the sum. This point is the sum. And this point is the sum. And we keep going. This point is the same. This point. And this point. This point is the same. And this point. 429 ways. And this point is also 429. So, we see that we have 429 ways. So, I have shown you how to solve this question using three ways with decreasing level of difficulty. So, thank you guys so much for watching. And if you enjoy my video and you want more videos like this, please consider liking and subscribing. If you want to master something, teach it.